<laughs> this is Ohm, an Arco seed entrusted with all the knowledge in the galaxy. Or at least he was. With the knowledge now dormant, Ohm was no interest to the mechanoids or the Empire and was left as the most advanced caveman in the galaxy. Throughout our journeys as Ohm, we'll go era to era, experiencing every age of development until, eventually, we rediscover the greatest technologies ever known. But while we're currently harmless to all but a few tribes frightened of a green man who fell from the sky, as we progress and our technologies become more advanced, we'll draw the attention of more powerful enemies and maybe even things better left undisturbed. Three hundred and seven mods, seven technology levels, one mod pack. Welcome back, everybody, to a generation-spanning RimWorld campaign. Unlike any we've ever done before, and depending on how it goes, and depending on how long it takes, certainly unlike any we're ever going to do again. The mod pack details, scenario, seed, everything will be available at the end of the episode because I'm sure you're more than eager to watch me suffer at this point. We're going to start with my Arco seed scenario bit of backstory you can read that if you are really that terribly bored we will have nothing but an arco replicator and a single technologyless person and i think this time around we'll let randy random take the wheel oh no why have you done this and there he is ohm the arco tech trauma savant with absolutely nothing at all i mean except for this hyper advanced magical arco tech replicator but don't worry about that and when i say we have nothing i mean we have quite literally nothing no technologies available to start things off not even the most basic of remote technologies we can't even build a wall so before we dive in let me explain a little bit more about what exactly is going on with this mod pack everything is about technological eras this time around i wanted to focus on every last aspect of the rimworld technology progression going from neolithic to tribal medieval industrial spacer and then eventually archotech well ultratech then archotech assuming we live that long of course we have access to some of the most overpowered mods i've ever played with rimworld science never stops void glitter tech industrialization all of them are locked behind that technology tree to get from neolithic to uh, tribal and from tribal to medieval etc we need to complete all of the technologies at that level we need to survive and learn what it is to be a tribal civilization a medieval civilization to keep things a little more balanced though so that we're not immediately sieged by void we are limited to what we can use and who we can fight by our tech level as a neolithic settlement we can only use neolithic weapons and armor even if we find a space attack weapon in base game run of course you can play as a tribal colony if a trade caravan comes under attack and drops marine armor you can get your tribal warriors armed with power armor essentially in this we can only use what we've researched but to keep it balanced we'll only come under attack from the people who are the same tech level as us think of it as drawing attention as we become a more valuable target what benefit would the empire have of raiding well, a man who doesn't even know how to build walls right now. To keep things a little bit more interesting, though, I have a combination of two things to help out with the difficulty. Firstly, we're going to be playing only on Savage, maybe Merciless, depending on how we do. I won't give myself that much credit quite yet. We'll be starting on Cassandra Classic Savage. We have the Hot Seat mod enabled, which will cycle us through either Cassandra Classic, Phoebe Chelax, or Randy Random, with the occasional chance to end up on the Void Storyteller. So even though things are very massively balanced for the technology era we're currently in, there's still a chance things are going to be very, very difficult. Not to mention, we also have to be a little bit strategic with the research that we go for, given that we have the semi-random research mod, allowing us to choose from four of the research in the current era to pick from, which are the most useful depending on the situation we're in. And to say that the research tree is dense would be somewhat of an understatement. I've fleshed out every single era in RimWorld. The medieval and the Neolithic era in base game RimWorld are actually fairly shallow. They have some very important research, Devil Strand, for example, the things that you will need going forward into industry, but nothing that allow you to specifically focus on and survive for a long period within that era. And I won't lie, this was very heavily inspired by the Robo Daddy series. I wanted something that allowed us to get all of that crazy high level tech, some of the most 
insane things we've ever seen in Romod going on simultaneously, but with that key balancing feature. Of course, in Robo Daddy series, it was we had one colonist and only one colonist incapable of violent. This time around, though, we've got all of these technologies, but with the limitation of tech itself and a little twist on things. Ohm, poor, poor Ohm, after his experience at the hands of that Lancer that turned him trauma savant, has a terrible, crippling phobia of firearms. And as the colony leader, not only will he refuse to use firearms, everybody in our colony will refuse to use firearms as well. That means no turrets, no embrasures, no kill boxes, cold, hard melee. And if you're thinking that sounds absurd, you're going to die in no time. Of course, I've got a few mods that will help balance things out. And not to mention, of course, if we survive for long enough, we've got a lot of, a lot of very, very powerful mods to back us up in terms of production and defenses outside of firearms. We'll get creative with things, but you'll see as we go ahead here. And with that, let's get started. Now, Ohm is an Arco Seed, one of the most advanced life forms in the galaxy, despite the fact it does say Volcano there, you don't have to worry about that. So even though, given the Lancer incident, he's forgotten everything and become a trauma savant, he is still extremely advanced with Arco limbs and an Arco Tech Cortex, giving a bonus to pain resistance, learning, research speed, not to mention, he has some pretty good foundations for building off of here. A double passion in everything. Ohm does have a form of double-edged sword here with his psychic hypersensitivity. Arco technology is psychic-based. The psychic lances, the psychic soothers are all Arco tech. The same Arco tech powering Ohm. This can be a blessing and this can be a horrible curse if we get a psychic drone. And even though Ohm was destined for greatness as an Arco Seed, of course, since his accident, he's lived amongst the trees as a caveman. So he's perfectly in harmony with nature. That means he doesn't really care particularly about eating with a table. I know, the greatest of all war crimes. And he's fairly ascetic when it comes to sleeping arrangements and living quarters, which is pretty handy because we can't even build walls right now. And finally, his deep fear of projectiles and ingrained itself deeply in his Arco technology, giving him transcendent reflexes, the ability to dodge incoming melee and projectile attacks. Now all he needs is, well, hopefully some friends. Or maybe an ancient danger. Yeah, I was about to say that, actually. Well, this map seems, um, pleasant. I was kind of hoping we could find somewhere to live in. I guess we could go for this structure here, or maybe this one, just to kick things off, because like I said, we can't actually build walls right now. Let's get this Arco Tech replicator installed somewhere safe. We're gonna have to be very, very careful with this thing, because it's well, it's the only other Arco tech thing we've got right now. Perfect. There's absolutely no way anybody could ever get to that. Now, why don't we go through the architect menu and actually see what we've got access to to kick things off. It's going to be very, very thin on the ground. We've got a little bit of a selection of beds there. Basically, no culinary. Some decorations. Oh, that'll come in handy. Ah. Ah. There's always one that slips through the cracks, isn't there? <laughs> you know, I'm not entirely sure they had dynamic relaxation chairs in the Neolithic era. Very little under lighting, nothing under factory, nothing under power, nothing under Arcotech. Production, we have a thinking spot. That's our basic research table, I would assume. And that is that. We can build these exotic doors, walls, columns, etc. if we had the right chunks. If we were on the correct biome, we're not. We're, we're in a desert. Well, ohm. I suppose we better get to thinking then. We have carvings, crude limbs, obelisks, or spark of science. Here we are. Unlocks research, so it doesn't unlock the actual, well, thing, but is, is a prerequisite to more advanced research. Agriculture, fire making, primitive butchering, burial rites. This sounds incredible. Think, Ohm. Think harder. Oh, damn, he's thinking. He's thinking pretty fast. Although that was only a one point research, so I'm. Um... <laughs> There we are. We've thought so incredibly hard. We have access to new things now. Obelisks, carvings, domestication of anima grass, or agriculture. As much as I would love control of all things psychic power, I think agriculture is probably a far more sensible choice. More importantly, what have we got going on around the map? What are these? Ancient boreholes allow us to extract N16 gas. It can be used as a gas converter to create chem fuel. We've got fusarium. A rock containing bits of fusarium. Well, that's cleared it up. And we have about a dozen anima trees, too. Nine. Nine anima trees. It's going to be a nightmare when the meteors start rolling in. Is that another ancient danger? Oh, God. Oh, Ohm, I'm so sorry. Well, start thinking about agriculture. Wow, that's a 
That's a huge amount of thinking he has to do. That's been a solid 30 seconds of thinking so far. It's a new record for the channel. <laughs> Whoa, hang on. Volcanian heat isolation. Blood filtration 5%. You're telling me the warmer he is, the better he does? Well, the desert might have been accidentally incredible for us. And we can't help but notice the poor boy's getting a little bit hungry. Um, I also can't help but notice there's nothing to eat. What is that? An ostrich! Oh, no. Oh, no. Please be careful. Please kick the ostrich. Uncanny reflexes. He's done it. No, I hope you're proud of yourself. Now, the astute of you might have noticed, not only do we not have a butcher's table, but we don't even have a butchering spot. So, unfortunately, this ostrich is going down. This is going down hole. Mm -mm -mm. What are you complaining about? I thought you didn't care about raw food. Ah, uh, okay, raw food, yes, but that's just the, that's just a, that's a straight-up corpse. Do you think we could prepare ostrich sushi? Well, I suppose if nothing else, we can bring it home for a rainy day. Now, while we wait for Ohm to think harder. Why don't we take a look around the world and see what we've got going on here. See who our immediate neighbors are. Killer desert. Good. Good. We have a hostile medieval faction, but those won't be any bother until we get up to medieval as well. We do have a friendly, that's quite nice, tribal nation to our southwest. Anora Fort. Uh, another hostile kingdom. That's good. Uh, we've got hostile cowboys. That's good. Hostile forsaken. That's great. Whatever those are. The Avian Dominion. These. These are an industrial settlement. Hostile. Good. What, what is this? Hostile Obsidia Imperium of the Sun. Blue Moon Corporation is also hostile. Division N. Hostile. You know, um, I really would appreciate it if you were to think faster. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot of people on this planet that really doesn't like you. Now, because at any time we could be ready by a very angry tribal nation with their bows and arrows. And of course, we're not allowed to use firearms. Positioning and using the indoors to our advantage is going to be key to survival. So to help us out with that and to help us plan things through, we have the minimap returning, which is something that I didn't know I needed until we used it last series. So now we can see with fair warning the people who are still probably going to wipe us out. You've done it, Ohm. You've thought so hard you've remembered that plants exist. I think we'll get to growing some desert rice before we have to go and kick another ostrich to death. And I suppose we could start working on anima grass. He has the natural backstory because he is in harmony with nature. That would be a very, very good weapon against those early raiders who say have ranged weapons when we don't. In that case, in between your very busy schedule of thinking all day, why don't we replace the eight hours of sleep that he doesn't need with meditation? Now let's do a little bit more thinking. And I'm thinking that we should be thinking about some basic furniture. Ah, our first Arco fragments. Those are incredible. And we can do absolutely nothing with them. Oh, Ohm. You didn't even finish your ostrich. Aha. Good work with the thinking. Now we have basic furniture. Anima drugs. Succulent sewing. Herbalism or crude limbs. Wow. Um. How can I not? How can I not? Domestication of anima grass. And allow us to build staffs, crowns, war masks. Or alternatively, we can make a skirt. <laughs> Excellent. We will make the finest ostrich leather skirt. Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do we want the ability to cook? Or the ability to build very basic rudimentary walls? This is a hard choice. Give me primitive cooking. And at long last, we have access to a crafting spot as well. What can we create right now? Neolithic tools? Cigarettes. Um. <laughs> not, quite, not quite sure about that one. So many of these things need leathers to produce. And of course, we can't use firearms or, or ranged weapons. So we're going to have to make ourselves quite a hefty weapon if we want to go out there hunting animals. Maybe a heavy club? What about a purple heavy club? Perfect. Now all we need are some... Oh no, a pair of quagga, critically endangered, have wandered into the area. Not for long they haven't. I'm sorry, fancy zebra. This hurts me more than it hurts you. Oh god. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you know it seems almost more cruel to kill one and not to kill the other. Incredible. Oh, our first animal grass. Oh, got a raid already. 
I had an animal transport crash. A Yorkshire Terrier named Sammy. Join us, Sammy. Bleeding out in seven hours. The raid can wait. No harm will ever come to you, Sammy the Yorkshire Terrier. Mark my words. Unfortunately, we're not quite ready to fight this raid on account of Ohm still being somewhat damaged from his endangered animal hunt. Now, we are somewhat outclassed, even though they are just a person there with a much smaller club. Both tribal characters and the Empire have access to Psy powers. Tolbra has Chunk Skip. Luckily, that one's not too bad. When they start turning up with Berserk, we, we might we might have a problem. Got to fight Psy Power with Psy Power. Or in this case, Club with far bigger Club. Get him home. Oh, this is horrible. Oh, this is absolutely horrible. <laughs> oh! Beer? And surprisingly, they survived that. Silent level one. Groundbreaker, Gourmand, Volatile, Cooking of Six, and Passions Across the Board. Maybe welcome to the team. Well, regardless of what we do with you, I am going to take your hat and your old team of fabric hand wraps, whatever those are. We can't wear the helmet. Unknown technology. Literally too stupid to put a helmet on his head. Do we have anywhere we can put the prisoner? Unless we crack open that ancient danger. No. Oh, what am I doing? We can't build walls. Okay, what can we build? Um, palisades? Oh, don't make me use my Arco Mass on palisades. Concrete saloon door? Sure. Sure. There we are. One rootin' tootin' sidecaster prison. Feels like it's been a long time since we've done any thinking. Shelter! Will this allow us to build walls? Simple walls. Simple walls are walls as far as I'm concerned. After a hard day of not thinking, it's unfortunately time to get back to thinking. Oh, or... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's an endangered animal. Unsurprisingly, Tolbra has gotten food poisoning from eating a raw, unbutchered, endangered animal. It being endangered isn't really pertinent to the food poisoning. It's just... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Is there any way we can make this indoors just to help speed things up a little bit? Absolutely outstanding. Whoa! Sammy, you traitor! What are you talking about? You got fed an endangered animal, you're not joining. And the worst part is, because Ohm is trauma savant, we can't even tame Sammy. If you're not with me, Sammy, you're against me. Oh, no. Oh, that is so sad. Ohm. Puts on the hat and then he remembers he doesn't know how to wear a hat, so has to take it off again. That's so sad. And finally, walls. Never thought I'd be happy to have walls in RimWorld. Simple stone cutting for the ability to build reinforced structures rather than houses built out of concrete saloon doors. And I'm not saying I don't enjoy our avant-garde concrete cowboy mess. It's just there's a very good reason we don't do that in real life. Ah, oh, the rice harvest is in. Congratulations, Tolbra. You no longer have to eat the raw corpse of an animal. Oh. Well, unfortunately for Tolbra, it was already too late. Tolbra? How did you... We can just walk out of the prison? Concrete simple walls or Arcotech oh, simple walls? You know, in hindsight, you make it a very easy choice. No more wandering away. Well, now what do we think about? Simple religion. <laughs> um, wow, that uh, took a turn. I think before we do anything else, we'll go for domestication of Anima Grass. Prisoner Tolbra is escaping. How? Tolbra, don't make me use this club. I didn't claim the door. <laughs> ah, good. You can't blame me for that one. We're playing as a green man who doesn't know how to wear a hat. Claiming doors is at the bottom of my list of priorities. Oh, whoa. Stropra's Salvation. Your colonists receive a psychic signal mentioning an entity named Stropra's and feeling an intuition of the signal location. She is a recently awakened Forsaken and is unable to move. Without your intervention, she'll be reached by another faction in some days, potentially ending in the indoctrination and corruption of his inner core. It's not far away. And we get to... We get to recruit them? Okay, Tolbra. Be good. We'll be back soon. Stropra's. Stropra's. Friend, offer help. Ah, there we go. You've rescued Stroopers and she has joined your group. 
Oh, wow. Cargo pods and caravan animals. Still another 1.4 days before we get back to the base. Well, I mean, if you can call it that. Oh, poor, poor Tolbra. Did kind of expect that to happen, though. And I mean, look at the bright side here. We've traded Tolbra for another glowy boy. Celium and city on the meadow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real, that's a real Iceland Greenland situation, huh? For the time being, I'm happy to leave it how it is, and I will give the honor of naming this colony, this faction, to you in the comment section. I'll choose my favorites from, from down there. And there we are. Fisherman, clumsy, ascetic. I didn't look at their skill set, but it's actually very good. Construction 10, single passion. Mining of 11, single passion. Social 9, double passion. Plants 5, double passion 2 is incredible. Stupras is the romantic and relies on her feelings. Sooner or later, Stupras overwhelms everyone with being notoriously temperamental. She becomes weirdly more empathetic when bored. Good. Now, this is all from the newly released 123 Personalities module, the first of the modules, which gives them distinct personality types. I believe it also affects animal behaviors as well. Certain animals will be more temperamental than others. But in this case, Ohm is the companion. Uh, what? You can't make him a side character in his own story. And relies mostly on his feelings. Ohm is unbearably possessive and can be astoundingly comforting after hours. Oh dear. <laughs> Need me someone astoundingly comforting after hours? You're really gonna do Tolbra like that. Really had to rub it in that you were chosen over them. Now the downside is, we're gonna need beds all of a sudden. The problem with that, I don't think you, we have anything to build beds out of. We can build a simple bed out of concrete? Well, sure. You can ascend very literally from sleeping on a concrete floor to a slightly higher concrete floor. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, right now, Stupras is better at quite a few skills than Ohm. It might even be beneficial to take Ohm completely off of harvesting and growing. Let Stupras deal with the entire farming aspect of things. And with that, Ohm's schedule is completely open to both thinking and, well, not thinking. Well, it isn't a huge improvement, but you're doing okay. No, I've never actually played with a forsaken colonist before. Maximum comfortable temperature 26 degrees C. Well, that's going to be a real problem. Minimum comfortable temperature 16 degrees C. That is a, a real problem. Yeah. They don't care about eating raw food, though, by the looks of it. Which is helpful because we quite literally haven't invented fire yet. Oh! Storyteller change. Phoebe Chillax. Fine. Uh, an emu has gone mad, though, and immediately savaged... Stroopers, for fuck's sake. Luckily, Ohm and his giant bird smashing club has dealt with it. I think this more or less confirms that Ohm is Australian as well. Living in a horrendously oppressive environment, filled almost exclusively with prisoners, most of whom get murdered by emus? Are you okay, though? Bleeding out in five hours. My God, you actually were about to be... Don't use the Glyssotec medicine, you moron. We really were about to be murdered by emus. Danny's ancient catacomb. Now, the last time we left someone lying around to go and hunt down something entirely unrelated. They died horribly. But I could be persuaded. It's not that far away. Why do we wait for Struppers to actually, you know, be capable of walking first? 22 days. Oh, 22 days. Oh, yeah, we'll be fine. And there we are. A successful day of thinking about grass. I guess the plan is to split this in half because we've already got kind of an absurd amount of rice, none of which we can store. We'll allow sowing on this half of the rice, and then with the other half of this field, we'll grow the anima grass. Now, this anima grass isn't for psychic purposes. Well, sort of is. You craft psychic gear out of it. It doesn't have the same effect as the anima grass around a anima tree. Cotton plant. Psychoid. Mmm, cotton plant. Ah, psychoid. Oh, walls. Not actual walls, though, unfortunately. Stacks of pebbles. Wait. <laughs> I feel like of all the uses for the most one of, one of the most advanced materials we can possibly get, stacking up chunks of arco mass into half a wall is probably a pretty terrible idea. Oh, perfect! So let's put our psycho. I mean, rice. Now, from what I remember about primitive food storage, we need an abundance of hay grass. Sorry, psychoid, and a way to build clay jars. And I assume. A clay pit is exactly what we need for that. Why do I put a clay pit? Place on the ground near water. Ah, there is water right there. Oh, there we go. A long last. Some bricks to not build 
walls out of. We still don't have walls. Well, we might not have walls, but we have ketchup? Sure. <laughs> you know, this is a perfect example of why I wanted to do exactly what we're doing right now. The beekeeping from Vanilla Expanded Vikings. I've had in pretty much every mod pack since Vanilla Expanded Vikings came out. And I've never once used it. Ohm, you're a beekeeper now, my friend. Oh, hello there. We could dismantle some ships into something that we then can't use. <laughs> a raid from the elders. This could be tricky if we're not careful. Ignite. Teleport a piece of a nearby star into a location, setting it on fire. No. No, I don't think I'm a fan of that at all, actually. Here's the plan. We hide behind a wall. And before this guy can light us on fire with a piece of nearby star, we hit him over the head with a very big club. Get him. Get him. Get him now. Yes. Ohm. Destroy. Look at the parrying. His reflexes. They're beyond any... Oh, you killed him. Do you know how useful it would have been to have a man who can light things on fire with his mind? Oh, God, he's still screaming. Oh, Ohm, finish him off, for God's sake. We've also got a quest. Yologia Duakid, Baroness of the Shattered Sovereignty, recently lost a scouting party to a pack of four man-hunting rats. She wants to lure them to us to be killed to uphold her honor. She's offering us glycerol medicine, limestone double bed, or... A Persona Chainsword? Hey, of course, it's an arcane technology. We can't use it. We need persona bounding first. Damn. Oh, cursed is the day where I take a limestone double bed over a persona chainsword. No, we'll take the... We'll obviously take the medicine here. I think the bed is probably arcane technology too. <laughs> Ice usage. That sounds like a good idea for our metric ton of rice we have right now. And if you're curious, there is a frightening amount of technology left to go for the primitive era. Dare I ask, what exactly do I need to research to unlock walls? Ah, that narrows it down. There it is. Reinforced structures under the medieval technology. So what we've got right now is the best that we can get for quite some time. Maybe we should start working on an actual base now. We can use the clay pit that we've got to get as many bricks as we need to build some very basic ceramic walls. And in terms of floors, we have well, actually nothing, unfortunately. We don't really need to build anywhere new yet. We already have this incredible clay table and this incredible other clay table. If we get a little bit more Arcotech mass, we can build ourselves a martial arts target to help train up our melee characters. We can even build ourselves an archery target out of one of the most advanced materials we could possibly ever get. Oh my god, the rats are here! And the game didn't pause. Ah, yep, yeah, that will do it. <laughs> <laughs> ohm run ohm get out of there get out of there please your ohm's only friend bleeding out in five hours they can't have done any permanent damage they're rats of course they can walk through the door because i haven't claimed it kill the ohm vengeance and now we can use that glyphosate medicine we've got to patch up stupras i'm so sorry indoor flooring fantastic I don't think we have any resources to be able to build indoor floors out of, but it is something. Oh my god, finally! Primitive butchering. The coveted ability to draw a square on the floor and butcher things in it. And then primitive cooking, too? Primitive weapons also unlocks basic traps for us. Wow, he's getting through this research so fast. 13.66 intellectual. To be fair, has sat doing research and nothing but research for quite some time. We've got the important ones. Cooking was essential. Butchering is essential. At this stage, let's go through it automatically. Oh, make storage pot. There we are. And we can even cook some meals. That way we don't have to eat raw endangered animals. <laughs> nice. Let's get that linking ritual underway. Burden. Please, burden. Give us burden. Some sort of long-range combat ability. We got... Stabilizing touch? What the hell is stabilizing touch? Stems the bleeding of a creature for a limited time. Oh, that's actually really good. Primitive weapons is complete. We're moving on to tree sewing. This is going to be massive because it's about the only way we can actually get floors right now by growing cactuses and then using that, which in hindsight sounds just terrible. Why don't we also make a weapon for stupras as well? How about a nice concrete spear? Sure. 
sure, why not? Now, the domesticated anima grass has a minimum growing skill of 12. So I'm very tempted just to take every patch of dirt in the world and grow some rice in it. Oh, we could grow something like tall grass. That way we wouldn't have to worry about going over there and harvesting it as well. Oh, a new recruit. Potentially, if they're any good. Oh, 11 mining. Holy crap. Underground are two. Martial artist. In a colony that hates firearms, that could be incredible. We finally finished tree sowing, which means we might be able to build a floor. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we can replace all of this grass I was growing with just tons of cactuses. Oh, the deserter. A loyalty squad consisting of two troopers. I don't know that I'm brave enough to take that out. Two silent neuroformers, two empty cortical stacks. Technology that we cannot use. A person equipped with technology we cannot use to fight two troopers who are ages above us. Oh, the loyalty squad was from the elders. That's basically a free colonist. Just home, about to casually club some nips. Did they just try and sidecast at him? What was that? It was burden. Be careful, be careful. What, what are you sad about? Why are you sad? Corpses. Death is just leaving the stage long enough to change costume and come back as a new character. What? <laughs> no. We didn't have to kill them both. Now, we do have the technology to wear that Anima War Veil and that Anima Tribal Wear. Both give Heat Recovering Psychic Sensitivity Offset. Let's go ahead and strip some nips. Are you upset by that? You are. It's only a minus two, though. And hey, we got a free person. Arcadius. Hello, Arcadius. Annoying voice, iron stomach, slob, and kind. Arcadius is the perfectionist and relies mostly on his instincts. I suppose we could train you up to be a good crafter. And that gives us a quest out here in the world. There it is, to get our silent neuroformers. That would take Ohm up to level three. We've also got an ancient ruins there and the legendary Viking grave. Where do we even begin? That was fast, we're here already. What are we up against? Oh God. <laughs> oh god oh no all we have to do is get within melee range without them shooting at us and we're set oh oh this is good the shuttle's gone this is good this is good get in there club them nice nice come on home god this is so dangerous please for the love of god you can do this i hope you're ready to get slammed oh you have to Buy me dinner first. Ah! Hey, there we go. A gun that we can't use, but more importantly, behind this door, I assume. Oh, look at that. Two silent neuroformers. There we are. Silent gained. And we are now up to level three. Stabilizing touch. Healing touch as well. Doubles the natural healing process of a creature. And finally, clean skip. Teleports all the filth in the selected area to the core of a nearby star, destroying it. Wow. Wow. Those aren't bad. I don't think clean skip is incredibly good. Although, Ohm is very quickly becoming a, an incredible healer. Not only are they our best medical character anyway. Stabilizing touch and healing touch and the ability to sterilize a hospital instantly. This is pretty impressive. And we also have two empty cortical stacks. What those are used for, we'll never know. We're too primitive, unfortunately. Oh, a storyteller change again. Goodbye, Phoebe Chillax. You've been very generous to allowing us to get a lot of research in. Oh, no. Oh, God. I just want to build my clay houses. Oh, and so it begins. So we will call it there for today for the adventures of Ohm, Struppers, and Arcadius. If you have any suggestions for this mod pack in terms of ideas, mods, anything that is safe to throw in, of course, let me know. I'm all ears. Tomorrow, we get our ass handed to us by Void himself. And after the credits, I'll be talking about all the necessary mod settings you'll need to adjust in order to get a similar gameplay experience with what I've got going on with the kind of eras of technology and things like that. In the meantime, of course, I have to give a massive thank you to the patrons, without which I would not have time to throw together mod packs, videos, other content across three different channels. You know how it is. Thank you in the meantime to Biv, Rathew, Viva La Fight Me, Jestonaut, Silence Sentinel, Xylo, Siphon, Virga of Doom, Mr. Moosh, Shotgun Diplomacy, DQ, X, Dr. Don, MD, JT, 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 Brady, and Dirty Mike and the Boys for their spot. The executive producer tiers over on Patreon. 
Big thanks to you guys for making the channel possible in the first place. And a thank you as well to Sendy, Salakin J, Tofu10, Astro, Muskratful, Rave Pirate, Remdel, Dion, Blackman00, Lady Cerulean, Kyle, Jordan, Sync9, Acero, and Marcus Absent. Now, I will write up as many of these mod settings as I can remember to write up in the Steam Workshop description as well, so that you can quickly and easily copy it from there if you don't want to follow along with what I'm talking about right now. But I'll give a little justica justification for some of it too, why certain settings are set up in a particular way. So going from top to bottom, alphabetical order, we'll start with Arcane Technology. Now, for the Arcane Technology settings, the very important one here is to set up the method by which this mod will calculate your tech level as actual colonist tech level. So, normally the way it works is your tech level is determined by the amount of research you've done, right? But if you have a mod like Tech Advancing, which is another one we'll set up in a second, that gives you an actual tech level that, that can be a, a kind of sliding system, depending on what you have and have not unlocked, you'll need set up like this. You don't have to set up like this, but if you do this, it makes everything a lot more cohesive and a lot tighter. You won't have like one mod thinking you've got Neolithic with different rules for that, or another mod thinking that you are, say, Medieval, because that has slightly more generous rules than the previous mod. This is also particularly important because, say, for example, you had it set to the highest tech research, which I believe is it by default, uh, you would be able to get, say, Spacer Tech uh, technology, even though maybe you've only unlocked one space attack or you say brush down some uh research prof calls or something like that now this is optional but highly recommended for any larger mod packs this being the largest mod pack i've ever built it's quite intensive the mod frame rate control allows you to change the target frame rate for rimworld beyond a certain point sure it'll look slightly nicer assuming you've got a higher refresh rate monitor but it is mostly pointless and if you're rendering a shitload of stuff at 200 frames per second it can get a little bit uh, jarring when you get kind of larger dips. So I personally set that to a solid 60. You can even set it lower and throttle the game engine as well. If you are running on a weaker system, I would recommend actually trying that if you're looking for a little bit of extra performance. So the next one we're going to set up is Ignorance is Bliss. There's another one of the three tech mods that we'll need to coordinate here uh, alongside Arcane Technology and Tech Advancing. Ignorance is Bliss is the mod I was talking about that allows you to only be targeted by... Raiders that are close to your own tech level. That way you're prevented from being raided by uh, Division N from Antimatter Annihilation or Void from, well, Void. So the way this works is you want to also set this one up to actual colonist tech level. That means both this one and Arcane Technology will default to whatever tech level is set up by tech advancing all three mods are, are unified at that point otherwise again you could potentially have variation between all of these different mods so the way i've personally got it set up is there are as, as you can see there are seven tech levels in the game by default there are no medieval factions so i've added in the medieval factions to make up for that i've set it so the maximum difference between our calculated tech level and any enemy's factions for zero ahead so you can make it a bit more flexible so say for example we set it one ahead that would mean in a tribal colony, you would be able to be raided by medieval factions. So for me, I've set it to zero because we're already playing on a harder difficulty. We've got Void Storyteller to contend with as well. The big problem with that is if we're industrial, the, the gap between, honestly, industrial and space attack is pretty significant. We're talking the difference between Cataphract Armor and Flak Vests. So I would rather not risk that. Uh, and again, similarly, medieval and industrial is the difference between crossbows, bows and arrows, plate armor, and full-on firearms. And while we're here, we'll take a look at the hot seat mod as well. Hot seat, I have set it up in this particular way, um, somewhat arbitrary, but with a fairly high chance to swap between storytellers fairly dynamically. I've only got Cassandra Classic, Phoebe Chillax, Randy Random, and Void enabled. It's entirely down to you, of course. You could throw in uh, Eagle would be safe to throw in, Freya would be safe to throw in, Oscar, Perry. I've put them in the mod pack as options for you guys to pick if you really want them to. For me, I just wanted these four. Keep it simple. Either base game remote storytellers or something that we're going to dread and is probably going to annihilate us. The next one, powerful sidecast AI. Now, this will allow the tribal factions, the elders and regular tribal factions alongside the empire to use sidecasts in combat as it is in kind of remote law, quote unquote. This is pretty essential to get a bit of early game challenge, particularly if you are medieval and the only people who can raid you are other medieval factions or tribal. It means that the tribal is still a force to contend with, but in a kind of different way to the medieval faction, right? So I thought this was kind of fun to throw in. I believe I triggered on uh, allow AIs to aggressively push heat above safer levels. 
and I increased it so that they could gain faster levels of sidecar. So I believe it's normally they increase by one level every six months you play. I changed it to one level every two months that we play because we are also... We, we have things like Meditation Freedom, um, mods that make it easier for the player to do sidecasting too. Like, for example, the Anima Gear mod. So I thought giving the AI a little bit more of a bonus in that regard would also help out quite a lot. That's only for Neolithic, which I set to 50%, and the Ultra Faction NPC, so Empire. It's entirely down to you how you want to do this. You could say that only Medieval or only Ultra have it, for example. I'm keeping it as default, but I give it a higher chance that, that half of all Neolithic Raiders will have Tribal Raiders, that is, will have a Psycast. I've also enabled them to use every single one. By default, Berserk Pulse, Manhunter Pulse, Berserk, po Berserk Regular, and Mass Chaos Skip, I believe, are disabled. I didn't mind that. I, I think they had a good amount of challenge. Semi-random research, I adjusted very, very slightly. I have increased the amount of project count available because there are so many technologies in this game. You can end up getting a lot of crap. So I've increased that to four. Then I've also set it to be restricted to faction tech level. Otherwise, you could potentially random tech from the slightly higher tiers as well. Again, to keep it in line with tech advancing and to unify it with all those other mods that we've got going on. Then I suppose we better get onto the star of the show, tech advancing itself. Uh, that's only available while playing a map. Well, that's frustrating. So tech advancing looks a little complicated, but it's not quite as bad as it might seem at a quick glance here. So you get the option between two different ways to progress technology. Either rule A, if the player has researched all techs of tech level X and below, the tech level rises to X plus something. So if we research what that means is, let's assume that tech level X in this situation is Neolithic. If we research all Neolithic techs and below, the tech level rises to Neolithic plus one, making it medieval. That, with this current rule, makes us Neolithic. So that's very, very helpful. This one here is, if the player has researched more than 50% of the text of tech level Y, the tech level Y rises to that plus whatever. So that one is, if you would prefer the kind of base game, I, I believe that's how it works in base game remote, right? Where, where is it? 50% of the technology. So, so to, to be counted as a space attack faction, you have to have researched 50% of all space attack technology. I kind of prefer rule A in some ways. It, it does make things a little bit more difficult. You get kind of peaks and troughs of difficulty in that the difficulty becomes the easiest at the end of the research tree. And then as you flip over into medieval, suddenly medieval factions can raid you and you've got to try and fend for yourself again using everything you picked up from the previous age. I quite like that personally. If you prefer it the way base game Rimworld works, so that you have to, you know, when you're 50% of the way through space attack, only then will you get space of raiders, that might be more for you. That'd be a much more balanced approach to things and would be a little bit easier, I think, than rule A. And outside of that, I would encourage you to have a look through all the mod settings yourself, all hundreds of them, <laughs> and have a look. See what works for you. See what suits you. And if you're curious about how I made them a melee only faction if you go into simple sidearms there's an option to change under the spawns tab the colonist default weapon mode to melee that should as it says there the default weapon preference mode for player control pawns is melee that means unless i specifically force them to equip a gun or any ranged weapon they won't do that and of course well i'm not going to do that because that's kind of part of the challenge really so if you want to do something similar, quite simply, all you have to do is, is enable that. If not, don't worry about it. I would highly recommend just looking through all the mod settings yourself. You might find interesting ways to play mods that you've played with a lot before that you might not realize you can you can adjust. To get to that, for those of you who don't know, options, mod settings, quite literally that simple. I would recommend doing it within a save for some mods and outside of the save for others. Graphics mods, for example, require you to reboot. Uh, things that affect the research tree can also sometimes require a reboot. Things that affect the way they work as well will require a reboot. So, I would go through them all in the main menu first. See what you can find. Then load in afterwards. Because that way you're you're reducing the risk for the amount of times you're going to be closing and reopening RimWorld. And then as per usual, the install instructions and everything will be available on the Steam Workshop page. Let me know what you think. If you've got any suggestions, throw them at me and... Uh, Let's see what we can do with this. An era-spanning remote campaign.